Although the current trend of coffee shops is inspired by America, what I found out is that coffee itself comes from the Muslims. In fact, coffee was known as the wine of the Muslims. The name from which you get the word coffee is from kahwa, and kahwa means wine. Wine in Islam is forbidden, as everyone knows. This was something which gave you a buzz, and it was considered halal. I mean, it was allowable. Coffee bushes grow wild all over Ethiopia, but it was a Sufi mystic from Yemen who introduced coffee to the rest of the world in the 9th century. Sheikh Ali ibn Omar al-Shazli was a disciple of a sheikh in Yemen, and the story goes that he fell in love with the daughter of the sheikh. Dangerous thing to do. And the sheikh said, well, you better get out of here. And he decided to go to Ethiopia, which is just across the strait there. And he spent some time in Ethiopia. And he came back a year later or so with coffee, which he brewed for his sheikh. And the sheikh was so impressed that he received him back. And in fact, Sheikh Ali, uh, it is said, got to marry the sheikh's daughter. The city of Mocha in Yemen became the center of coffee cultivation. As the Muslim empire expanded, Yemeni merchants took coffee to all the great cities of Islam, including the holy city of Mecca, where Muslims converged for the annual pilgrimage of the Hajj. The Quran specifically mentions the fact that there's no harm and there's nothing wrong with taking this travel as an opportunity for trade after you've accomplished the rites of the Hajj. So the Hajj became a very big trade event. Ya ayyuhallazina amanu la ta'kulu You who have faith, do not consume one another's property by false means. Baynakum bil batili illa But only by means of mutually agreed trade. And do not kill yourselves. Allah is most merciful to you. So it was through trade that coffee spread throughout the Muslim world, and two styles of coffee came to dominate, Arabic and Turkish. People think that, first of all, there's the, the misconception that uh, Turkish coffee is Arabic coffee. Uh, they're about as far apart as they can be. Arabic coffee, strictly speaking, is the most lightly roasted of all coffees. The color of Arabic coffee is a, a kind of a light yellow. Turkish coffee is highly roasted, I would say even burnt coffee, pulverized into a, a talcum-like uh, uh, material, which is then boiled, and uh, you get that thick, rich, rather good-tasting coffee if it's well made. So how do you make a proper cup of Turkish coffee? Well, Harir here is going to show me how. You have your jezve, which is a um, coffee cooker. You measure your water. And that's cold water? Mm -hmm. It's cold water. If you cook coffee with cold water, it's better you get the better coffee and better taste also. Okay. And what you need to have is about a full spoon of coffee. Uh-huh. Quite full. Cool. For sweet coffee, you need to get a full spoon of sugar as well. Do people normally drink it sweet? Yeah. In Turkish proverb, you say, eat, eat sweet or drink sweet and talk sweet as well. Oh, right. so okay. That's why Turkish men are sweet talkers. Oh, right. <laughs> so you need to stir the coffee slowly uh -huh. to get a um, nice froth and a very good taste as well. So it's best to make each mm -hmm. cup individually if you yeah. want to get it absolutely right. Then you, yeah. Oh, I can yeah, smell yeah. it. That mm -hmm. smells delicious. Yeah. When you have nice froths on the top, then you pour on your cup to get that nice froth on your coffee. Yep. Yeah? There we go. So you pour the froth off first. Mm -hmm. Yes. First, and then you still keep cooking it as well. You see the coffee is burned, then you get better taste in your jasmine. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's good. Mmm. Now that is a proper cup of Turkish coffee. Well, I'm still wondering how coffee eventually made it to Europe. 
Claudia Roden is a food writer and she's also the author of a book on coffee. Claudia, I know that coffee originally came from Ethiopia and the Yemen. Can you tell me how it got to Europe? Actually, uh, one way that coffee came into Europe was through Vienna uh, because there was the uh, siege of Vienna by the Turks and when the Turks left, uh, they left uh, bags and bags of coffee beans and uh, one of the interpreters, uh, I think he was called Franz Josef Kolschinski or something like that, uh, took all the coffee and he was the first person to sell coffee and he made it in the same way as, as the Turks did. Uh, but very soon, almost every city in Europe and, and in Britain had coffee shops. Actually, the first coffee shop in Europe was in Britain, in Oxford. And uh, you would often find a Turk's head or a Sultan's head or a coffee pot as a sign to show that coffee was being sold somewhere. Despite the fashion for all things Turkish, coffee soon fell out of favour. It was thanks to India and Indian tea that the British became a nation of tea drinkers. So when did the coffee shops become popular again? Well, not until the 1950s. And that was the time when I first came to Britain. And uh, I was an art student in Soho. And there, there were all the coffee houses uh, that opened because Gaja, uh, Gaja espresso machines were sold in England. And uh, we used to sit around a table which had Chianti bottles and a candle. And sometimes there was a guitarist. But at that time, uh, at home, everybody drank instant coffee. With over 4 million cups being drunk each week in the UK, coffee is now big business. A whole new culture is being born around high street coffee shops with comfortable sofas and quality blends. People have fallen in love with coffee. Uh, there's been quite a conversion, and you can look at the market numbers, from tea into coffee. Uh, coffee's, coffee is taking over, especially with the younger generation and people are really starting to take an interest and understand that different cappuccinos taste different for a reason. There's about a hundred different reasons I could tell you from when the bean is picked to Costa to the time that we actually grind it and hand make it. Today, coffee is the world's second most traded commodity after oil. This ancient concoction used by the Sufis to keep awake for prayer now fuels the world. 